Today on CTV News at 5, how a decision that'll benefit cross-border shoppers is sitting with local retailers. Plus, a penny for your thoughts. Southern Albertans weigh in on the federal government's decision to eliminate the penny. And an update on the rehabilitation of Canada's youngest multiple killer. Good afternoon, Southern Alberta retailers aren't panicking over plans to increase the amount of tax-free imported goods people can bring across the border when shopping in the United States. Exemption limits are being raised under the new federal budget. Local businesses say it may have some impact on their bottom line, but say cross-border shopping is something they've always had to deal with. Terry Vogt reports. The federal government says increasing limits on the value of goods Canadians can bring into the country before paying duty or tax is aimed at reducing lineups and streamlining the cross-border process. Business analysts say it also brings regulations in line with what's already happening. Authorities weren't necessarily managing uh, the rules that were already in existence with the $50 days. I don't know how many times people have gone across the border and say, oh, I've spent $150, $200 go through, go through. Starting June 1st, exemption limits for those who've been away from Canada for 24 hours will increase from $50 to $200 and from $400 to $800 for those who've been away for 48 hours. The Lethbridge retail industry says there's bound to be some impact, but since they have no control over regulations, what they'll focus on is doing what they can to keep shoppers close to home. Cross-border shopping is definitely part of our uh, economy. Um, it, it is, it, it's a reality. Um, we don't anticipate this to be a negative uh, whatsoever for us. It's something that hasn't been touched for decades as far as the increasing the values. We've got great uh, product mix, first to market tenants with Bench, Old Navy, Aeropostale, you know, tenants like that. And we, f we really do feel that there isn't a need uh, to go uh, down to the States. I do believe I'll spend what I can here first and then I'll go down there. As a retailer downtown, I, I would encourage people to shop in Lethbridge. Local retailers say there's not much they can do about the limits for cross-border shopping, but they say this is an issue they've always had to deal with, and what they're focusing on is keeping shoppers north of the border. The new exemption limits harmonize the Canadian levels with those already in place in the U.S. Meanwhile, the Senate Finance Committee continues to study another thorny cross-border issue, the price gap between goods sold in Canada and the United States, despite the relative parity in currency. Terry Vogt, CTV News, Lethbridge. Each year, Canadians take 30 million overnight trips outside of Canada. And the budget also included an announcement about the future of the penny. Come fall, no more pennies will be minted. It's a move that's expected to save taxpayers millions of dollars. Michael Popov reports. The penny comes with its own sayings. A penny saved is a penny earned. A uh, penny for your thoughts? Its own fashion line in the form of a penny loafer. The penny even has its own Twitter account. But after 154 years of service, economist Donna Townley says the penny's time to shine is almost over. A penny costs us 1.6 cents to produce one cent penny. And the savings to the economy uh, will be over in excess of $130 million. The one cent coin is being retired this fall as the Royal Canadian Mint will stop annual production of over 7 million tons of pennies. Which is extremely important to a country that is building itself and working out of a recession. We need to take measures that makes our country work smoother and one of the ways is to eliminate that old penny. When the penny disappears, cash transactions will be rounded up or down to the nearest nickel after taxes have been added. We've actually tried to make our accounting simple by including GST and rounding our prices to the nearest 10 cents. And so it really won't affect what we do in any way, in a negative way, it'll just be a positive thing. The elimination of the Canadian penny will not contribute to inflation. The rounding up, rounding down factor will round itself out. Abolishing the penny in such places like Australia and Norway didn't lead to increased prices. It will, however, lead to a lot less jingling of coins in Canadian pockets. This is the happiest day of my life. I've been ranting about this for 10 years. I think pennies are lucky. I pick a penny, I pick it up, then all day I'll have good luck. 
Ottawa is calling the penny a burden to the economy, estimating it's losing $11 million a year producing the one cent coin. The government does say that after the change, the penny will retain its value and will still be able to be used as legal tender. Michael Popove, CTV News, Lethbridge. With 100 years of inflation taking its toll on the penny, the one cent coin has decreased to about 1 20th of its original purchasing. And Dory is here now with a first look at weather. Dory, nice and mild here in southern Alberta, mm -hmm. not really the case to the east and west of us. No, you can't call their forecast a shiny penny of a forecast. Get the segue there? Yeah. I'm going to miss the penny, I have to admit. But yeah, down east, uh, they've got the jet stream sagging to the south. Out west, the jet stream rising to the north. It's a big forecast difference as far as temperatures and conditions. I'll tell you all about it in a couple of minutes. Thanks very much, Dory. Lethbridge Regional Police are trying to track down a missing teen. 17-year-old Jamie Dixon was last seen in Coaldale March 29th. He was wearing black pants, a black jacket, and white runners. Dixon is about 5 foot 9 and 135 pounds with blonde hair and blue eyes. She has a small scar on her wrist and a pierced nose. Her family thinks she may be in the Tabor area. Anyone with information on Dixon's whereabouts can contact Lethbridge Regional Police. Canada's youngest multiple killer is being integrated back into society and working towards becoming more independent. That's according to a review hearing in a Medicine Hat courtroom this morning. The girl, now 18, is in phase four of a four-phase program, meaning she is out of custody, though still under supervision. Her lawyers say she is on a steep learning curve and did get ahead of herself at one point, but she is now back on track and no further explanation was given there. The girl is taking post-secondary courses and working a part-time job. Care workers are reducing the girl's financial, emotional and physical supports to make her more independent. Then they will focus on therapy. Um, transition phase was a very um, tricky one, but it's been handled really well. And so the concentration was on the transition. And now as I'm informed today, they're going to go back to working on some of those goals, including talking about the offenses, which was good news to me. Justice Scott Brooker did extend the girl's curfew from 10 p.m. to 11.30 since she is now an adult. In 2006, the girl who was 12 at the time and her then-boyfriend Jeremy Steinke, who was 23, killed her parents and 8-year-old brother. They were each convicted of three counts of first-degree murder. Steinke is serving a life sentence. Wild Rose leader Danielle Smith is campaigning in southern Alberta today, and she chose Lethbridge to announce part two of the party's family pack of campaign promises. The first stop was the Lethbridge Public Library, where Smith pledged a Wild Rose government would ban mandatory school fees. It's a promise that would cost between 40 and 80 million dollars, which Smith says would be paid for through increased education funding and finding inefficiencies. So no more nickel and diming for parents uh, to fill the gaps that are created in the shortfalls of PC education funding. These nickels and dimes add up to as much as $150 per child per year. And Smith also made stops at the Galt Museum, Coaldale and Tabor. She is campaigning in Medicine Hat tonight. The Wild Rose leader isn't getting carried away with a recent opinion poll that suggests her party is now running ahead of the PCs in voter preference. The poll by Forum Research and reported in the Calgary Sun puts the Wild Rose at 41 percent compared to 31 percent for the PCs. But Smith says there's still 24 days of hard campaigning to go. What I would say is I think that it's very clear that the PCs do not have the lock on Alberta sentiment the way they once did. I think what it does say is that Albertans are open-minded about the idea of change. Smith says part past elections have shown that there can be dramatic swings during an election campaign. She says Wildrose plans to keep running as if it's 10 points behind. A University of Lethbridge political scientist says he's seen interesting races before, but for the past 35 years, the result has always been a PC win. Here's Dr. Peter McCormick. Part of your mind says, I don't pay much attention to one poll. I need a string of polls. I need to see how a number work out. And that one seems quite a, a wild result. But it, it, I keep t uh, also telling myself, Albertans only change their minds once every generation. But when they change their minds, they do it fast and they do it in large numbers. So this just could be another 1971. This could be a huge turnaround that leaves everybody a bit startled, including, to be honest, even the party that pulls it off. 
And PC leader Allison Redford is admitting her first mistake of the campaign. Redford says she should have acted sooner and more decisively in the committee meeting pay scandal. Weeks after the scandal first broke, Redford is now ordering PC MLAs to repay all the money they earned for being on a committee that never met. Lethbridge's Bridget Pastor is among those MLAs serving on the committee. Redford initially told them to repay only the money they've earned since she became premier. Now she's doing an about face following the lead of the other parties and admitting she got it wrong. We should have gone further than we did over the past few weeks. And so, so today I am showing you the leadership that you expect to set things right. Redford now says MLAs who served on the committee will be asked to cut a check for the full amount they collected. If any retiring MLAs refuse, the party will cover their tab. Those running again will not get the same courtesy. Well, this weekend you are encouraged to switch off. Earth Hour is this Saturday starting at 8.30 p.m. for one hour. You're asked to turn off all your lights to raise awareness about climate change. Earth Hour started off as a National World Wildlife Fund initiative in Australia in 2007. Last year, over 5,000 cities and 135 countries in all seven continents took part. And this year, the Galt Museum is joining in. The Galt is going to shut off our lights, our facade lights on the 1910 building from 8.30 till 9.30. We're going to join about 146 countries and 5,000 municipalities in reminding ourselves and our neighbors to be conscious about our energy use. And once again, Earth Hour runs Saturday night from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. A blood reserve band is rocking out one last time before wrapping up a year-long cancer campaign. When lead singer John Scout's grandpa died of cancer last year, the 20-year-old got more serious about his music and released his first CD. It was nominated for an Aboriginal People's Choice Music Award. Half of the money from Johnny Rain's band CD and t-shirt sales will go to the Canadian Cancer Society. The band will headline the Empress Theatre in Fort McLeod tonight at 6 o'clock, following acts by Derek Starlight and a Johnny Cash tribute band. Now tickets are $20 and are still available at the door. Right now, let's take a look at how the markets wrapped up the week.